Hello, Just Too Good here, and I've been dying to get this set since I joined the LEGO community back in like 2008, and I got back into LEGO, or at least from that older perspective that I have now. <laughs> I finally got it. Gonna build this. This is the LEGO Castle Fantasy Era Dwarves Mindset from 2007 with 575 pieces, six minifigures, one big fig, and it retailed for $60 in the United States. From my understanding, I think this was a Target exclusive, at least in 2007, but it might have dispersed into other stores in 2008. Do not quote me on that. It's hard to find info on exclusives because it was something not a lot of people cared about, but I always like keeping track of that stuff. Oh man, let's open this up. I've always wanted to build this. This is back in 2008. Always wanted this one, but I couldn't get bigger ones back then. Pouring out all of the pieces. <gasps> Looks like one is loose. Oh no. Huh. I gotta get to the bottom of which one of these bags is the open one. Well, it seems like we got at least uh, numbering up to five. You got your big fig right here. And then that lovely instruction booklet. Oh man, I'm, I can't believe I'm actually building this. But one thing that's concerning me. Oh, okay, I was like, there's two instructions. There's the second one. So here's the set all built up, a dream come true for me to build. I have to thank you guys for continuing to watch these videos because I wouldn't be able to afford this if you guys didn't, so I really, really appreciate it. But let's take a closer look at the minifigures. So we'll start with the Big Fig Troll. Now in this dark tan color, there's two other sets that it comes in, which is the Troll Fortress, but that 2009 set has different armor. It isn't this bronze armor molded in. So that's technically a different figure. And then it also came in the Fantasy Era chess set, which that set is ridiculously expensive secondhand now. I mean, you can get it cheap for $1,000. Oh my gosh. I wish I would have got it back in the day because not only did you get this dark tan troll, but you also got the sand green one. So I got the sand green one in that troll cart set, which is like $20. It was crazy to have a big fig set that was only $20. Anyways, I really love this big fig troll design where it's very Lego-like and original. And the overall design has some separate pieces. So it's like a modern big fig where they're attached with these Technic pins right there. You can see they're hidden, so it doesn't matter that they're blue. And then you have separate arm pieces, which even have a little stud at the bracelet right here. And then there's a separate hand piece, which is a little bit hard to take out, which is smaller than say Hulk's big fig hands from 2012. We also have this big club piece, which came in two other sets with the troll. So it was pretty hard to find as well as some attachments at the side with those spike pieces as if they're horns, spikes at the top, which those are also doubling as studs. The ones at the sides are just holes. No posability with the head here. It's just fixed in that position, but that's fine. And I like the dual molding here with the black as well as the, well, actually the black seems like it's printing, so that's just paint, but the bronze and the dark tan, which is fantastic. You can see how he could stick across some studs. And then there's even some studs at the front right here. A very cool and memorable looking big fig that was original from Lego's mind. And that club piece looks hilarious when you get a minifigure to hold it because it's so oversized. <laughs> so you get two of the troll warrior in the set, the same figure aside from one having that really cool shield piece. The shield piece is one that only comes in a couple other sets. I mean, the troll warriors came in a lot of the fantasy era castle sets, but I don't think I had this in any of the sets I had back in the day. So that's a really cool print. I like the shaping of that shield as well. But for the torso print, that is pretty darn nostalgic, as well as that helmet piece with that speckly coloring. Also, you have a copper sword there, which is a nice scimitar. The printing on the face is the classic fantasy era troll print. And there's not too much going on at the back, even though it's a 2008 figure. So for the dwarf minifigures, I call this one the dwarf king. Now, the pieces here are kind of rare with this gold helmet, as well as that beard piece. Uh, the beard also coming in the advent calendar and then a figure who's basically the replica of this figure without the accessories in 2009 for the dwarf battle pack and then that helmet piece also comes in the dwarf chest set as well as the advent calendar and the battle pack this design has a pro gold goblet and a jewel and the design of this you can see has some difference in the beard piece at the back i really like that beard piece the only thing i don't like is it's very hard to remove 
the headpiece once you have the beard piece on or even remove it from the minifigure when it's attached like this. You can see last time I removed it, I got a little bit of damage right there, so that's quite annoying. And with all that stuff removed, you can see a look at the torso and the face print, the face being the Jang face, the torso being a face from Vikings that was also used in that clone figure from that dwarf battle pack in 2009. For this next minifigure, the rare parts once again would be the beard and the helmet piece where the beard has come in a series five minifigure, which was the evil dwarf. This set, the dwarf battle pack, and then the castle chest set, the helmet coming in those same sets besides the series five minifigure, but also the troll warship set. Love that helmet design and I wish we got it more. It was one that I didn't have when I was younger and the shaping there is just really, really neat. He also has a mallet and that classic sword as an accessory. Much like the other minifigures of the set, there's no back torso printing, but with those pieces removed, you can get a look at super nostalgic uh, head print and uh, torso print there, using a lot of Fantasy Era Castle, the face print used in Fantasy Era Castle and City. Yes, I know, I keep reminiscing, but uh, I'm getting nostalgic, or is it nostalgic? I, I don't know, whenever I say that, people say I'm saying it wrong in the comments. But the design of this reminds me a lot of the one from the Dwarf Mind Defender, which actually goes along with the set. One of the first sets, if not the first, that I ever bought with my own money, is I would only receive Lego as gifts back in the day. But the design has that same helmet and beard coloring as the one in the Dwarf Mind Defender, which was a $10 set. The helmet's pretty rare because it only came in this set, that set, and the Dwarf Battle Pack. And then the beard in that coloring also came in the chest set, as well as the Troll Warship, I believe. The design of the shield is quite rare as well, where it only comes in the Battle Pack and the chest set, which again were two rare ones to find. Also love getting the copper axe heads there. The face print is a much less common one than those other ones we just looked at, where it was used for the king of the fantasy era castle sets. And that torso print is once again the Vikings one used with another minifigure of this set. No back printing on either of those designs. Oddly enough, the set also includes an extra one of that helmet. I'm not complaining. And for this final dwarf, that same rare dark brown beard we looked at earlier, that helmet piece in that coloring is even more rare than that silver counterpart, where this is one that only came in this set, the Dwarf Battle Pack and the chest set. Love that copper design there and love that helmet piece that I wish we got more of. And with all that stuff removed, torso print, that is a Viking's torso that was also used in one other castle set as the King's torso in the original King's Castle Siege from 2007 and that super overused face print. The set also includes four gold and four silver ones of the Power Miner Crystals, as some people call them. They're also the Rock Raider Crystals. You get the point. But it's really nice to see that these aren't pearl gold or anything, but more of that metallic looking gold. So from the front here, even though it is a facade of a mine, it doesn't feel like that. It feels more like a mountain, which I really like. It's a beautiful exterior, which doesn't hide any of the play features, but just has a lot going on. and has a lot of detail to it that's unique from other LEGO castle sets. Now moving for a look from the side, you can see more of that minecart track and how it connects from the front to the back. And the view of the interior of the mine still has some nice details going on there and some more play features and hidden parts throughout. I guess we'll start by taking a look at this set from the front. The builds for the minecart are two identical ones and they're absolutely fantastic. Like I adore the unconventional part usage they have going on here where they use these particular car doors which just work as a side of the minecart. It's a studs not on top technique of a build and the design of this holds about three to four of those gold and silver pieces. A lot of people think of them as the Power Miners crystals. That's super nostalgic to me too. Man, take a shot of milk every time I say nostalgic in this video. And they connect right with this ball joint and cup feature. And you could move that base of the minecart side to side, which that's pretty fun and the wheels of the minecart connect to this railing right here 
the connected railing pieces, which there's a total of six, making it very easy to push the cart from the front to the back. It doesn't fall off or anything there. To the right of the minecart tracks, we have some finished weaponry here. There's some more axes, which I love the use of that bronze axe head piece once again. So you get quite a few in this set. Also a finished hammer, which this hammer design is actually pretty neat in how it's built. And a pickaxe right there in this barrel. Also, we have some armor for the Knights of Fantasy Castle, which is a nice addition. An anvil right here. And then there's some ladders which you carry or, or climb up, which lead to that pulley system up top here. The design of which you can fit some of the silver and gold on and just push this part and it will lower it to this bottom section, which you can access from the back inside the mine. That's a very smooth feature. The top of that using that black speckled wheel that only came in a few other fantasy era castle sets. I think that uh, battle cart and is it the mobile tower or yeah, I think it might be the mobile tower. And before we finish up with this side, note this big ugly rock piece, which in that gray and green coloring only comes in the King's Castle Siege as well as the Indiana Jones Temple Escape. Anyways, for this left side of the front exterior, we have a little shovel on the wall there. Also this nice inclined slope, which has another play feature to it where you can transport gold and silver via this carrier system. So they use one of those long wire pieces and all you have to do is push it from this side all the way to the other side inside the mine. And you could push it down to this side with that slope part and then push it forward. And then most of the gold pieces, if you do it right, will go into this tray at the front and then that's when you could sort it onto the mine carts themselves. You can also adjust that slope up and down if you'd like to have a little bit of a different inclination. That's pretty fun to sort through. Placing that gold back and moving to the top here, on that left side, there's a catapult, which uses one of those, I think it was used a lot in the Knight's Kingdom and the Bionicle system line. It's nice to get that dual molding of colorings there with the translucent and the gray, but that catapult just works by putting that boulder piece there and you can fully rotate it 360 degrees. These don't do anything, they're just for added design. But by pushing down at the front, oh my gosh, that hit the light. <laughs> that hits pretty hard. But yeah, that's actually a pretty unique catapult for what it is. Reminds me of the ones I think in the Angry Bird sets. Fun to play around with. Finishing up with the front exterior, we have this little dwarf throne section, which is why I called this guy the King Dwarf. You can just have him standing up on there, even though it has four studs, because he has short legs, so he can't sit down. But that's not too much going on in that section right there. There's two more of that dwarf shield, which is hard to get, so that's really nice. More of that axe head in the copper coloring. And at the very top, we have another big, ugly rock piece, but not one of the rarer ones. But anyways, moving to the back of this inside the mine, you could call it. You get a better look at the section we just looked at. But let's start at the bottom here. So pushing the carts through the mine doors opens up to the interior of the mine. Lining the mine carts with this tray in the middle right here and pushing that carrier system to this back side and dipping the gold inside there. It sorts through to one of the mine carts, which works really smoothly. I like how it lines up. There's ladders on this side of that feature. On the other side, they use a beam closed off with some of these uh, tiles right here. This side, as pointed out earlier, is understandably vacant for that pulley system. But the other corner does have a little bit of uh, some designs inside with the furnace, a goblet, and even a chicken leg in this barrel right here, so that could even be an oven. But that's really it for the build of the mine. Not too much else to show here. One thing I did want to say is that I was kind of surprised that these were built using Technic pins in the middle here. 
but they do end up connecting more than just a Technic pin, so it's not something you could easily remove. That kind of makes me wish they made more expansions because at the ends we do have these bricks with Technic holes there so that you could have maybe added some parts to this dwarf mine, but I guess you could do that on your own. Anyways, let's take a look at the packaging and the final verdict. We already had a good look at the box in the beginning, but I just want to point out some details here where it says special edition. Usually when it says that, that means it's a store exclusive in the United States. Like I said, I think this sort of as a Target exclusive, but then just came out everywhere. And at the back, I just love all the features shown here. This is one of the most gorgeous backs of the box with the castle or fortress walls and all those little windows of what's going on. For the instructions, this one has a classic win ad before there was a screaming kid. You can even see a Dino 2010 set there, which was never released in the United States, even though this is a United States box. And then we also have uh, this instruction booklet, which has a poster of those 2007 sets, which looks gorgeous, as well as some advertisements at the back for more 2007 sets. This King's Castle Siege I really want, but have not gotten, and it's ridiculously expensive. I remember even back when I got into LEGO around 2008 in the fan community, as I am now a days, uh, this was hard to find. I couldn't find this in stores. Then once I found it at uh, the Lego store in downtown Disney and I regretfully did not pick it up. I think it was between getting this, this set or the medieval market village and I went with this set, which don't get me wrong, I like this set, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Other than that, we also have this set, which I reviewed rather recently. Uh, this set I got along with the Dwarf Mind Defender, I think as the first Lego sets I ever bought and then this set right here, which was a classic one, which I also got at like Kmart back in the day, along with this set at Kmart. Oh, this line is so nostalgic. Again, gotta take another milk shot. Ah, this set is an absolute joy. Not only is it a fantastic display piece, but the play features of this are really fun too. Just transporting the gold and the silver, the mine cart feature and the pulleys, which you could move those parts up and down, even the catapult. But yeah, the build here is so one of a kind and it's something that I haven't seen from Lego since. And I wish they would make more dwarf sets like this, more castle fantasy era stuff in general, which is super nostalgic to me, but also just has such character to it compared to a lot of other castle themes from the more modern times, which just seem to be rehashes of the same ideas. This is phenomenal. And it's one of my favorite sets that I've reviewed on the channel, honestly. It was a joy to build. It has some fantastic minifigures and yeah, fantastic set. My only minor complaint with this set is that I wish the interior had a little bit more detail like the exterior does. Fantastic set. Don't have too much else to say. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know which Lego castle sets you had when you were younger. Subscribe for more old and new Lego content and I'll see you guys later. Peace out. Bye.